Hello, this is part two of my spiritual autobiography. Um, I stopped at 12 and a half minutes because I was coming up on a very pivotal experience that I did not want to tell in any rushed fashion. Um, one of the most important spiritual experiences of my life a thing called the empty tomb. Now, I had been reading how the Word of God says that all spiritual gifts are given for the edification of the body of Christ. And observing that, the churches that I had interfaced with were perceiving only one or two gifts as being really necessary and pushing either pushing other spiritual gifts to the side or giving the idea that these are the only ones that are necessary um, others are not useful to the body and I knew because of my previous life as a musician uh, many Christian artists and musicians uh, fairly well and was convinced that they had a, a sense that the church did not need them. A church that their gifts were not something that could be plugged in and used in the body of Christ. At that time I was given two books by the man who was my supervisor uh, at the church that I had worked at at that time. One uh, is by a pair of Christian counselors. That is a book that talks about spiritual gifts, the need to get them involved in the church, and also introduced me, I believe, to the Myers-Briggs type indicator and I had just a strong desire to have a informal Bible study in my home where we spent a couple of months going through each chapter of that book and at the end of that I wanted people to take back with them a sense of purpose and a sense of engagement that they could bring and see the place where their God-given gifts, expressions of the Holy Spirit, could be of greater use in their home churches. Um, I saw also that if the Myers-Briggs can be supported by brain scans, as it is by the work of Dario Nardi, then it is a aspect of personality that is God-given and something we should try to understand about one another before we make personality difficulties a major crisis in the church. Uh, a certain amount of conflict is just my God-given personality design, your God-given personality design, creating some kind of scuffle interpersonally, not physically, but an interpersonal scuffle, if you can follow the meaning of that, uh, that then become sort of, you know, well, I think it's really biblical, I think it's really a spiritual issue, as opposed to two people whose brains see things differently. Now, we can find the midpoint in Christ, we can find understanding each other in Christ, but the idea that my way of looking at it is automatically right and yours is automatically wrong is a tragic and injurious thing within the church that I think personality science can help us with. Um, the second book um, was one on multi-sensory worship, um, and I don't want to connect it with the movement that the author is connected with. The movement is not interesting to me, but I do think that God made all of our senses to worship, and we have the freedom to use all the arts, to use colors, to use symbolism. Um, and that was the other thing that I brought to the empty tomb, in addition to 
um, this book on individual gifting uh, and then this book on multi-sensory worship and so I would take the themes and I would try to flesh them out with the guidance of this book uh, with various expressions of the creative arts um, and various kinds of multi-sensory atmosphere and I was entirely satisfied with the idea of a couple of months of encouraging these people um, with more ways to utilize their creative gifts and it brought a perspective of what the Bible says about how all gifts are used in the church. At the end of, uh, I think it was two months, not even three months, what was intended to be a short-term liminal Bible study a couple of the artists involved said, well, I think this is my church, here's my tithe. Uh, not how things usually work. Uh, as an older person, because I was probably 29 or 30 when this occurred, um, as an older person, I would not have been bowled over by that experience. I would have said, no thank you, or at least can we partner this with a larger entity, um, and I did try for the entire four years to find partnerships with other entities to connect it to a denomination, uh, there was zero interest, there was zero, all doors were closed as far as I could figure out. Um, nonetheless, because of that interesting starting point, it became the only time I've experienced a church that really resembled the second chapter of Acts. Um, what you see is a, is a buzzing hive of spirit-led activity, and all members doing their part, whatever that is. It, and it felt alive. It felt like being transported in time. It felt like a just an unbelievably real spiritual experience. Um, and I really felt like it achieved its mission of everybody being in touch with the sense of who God made them to be and what they were supposed to be doing in the Church of God. In my limited experience, it, it does seem in a lot of the modern church that a couple of gifts and a couple of people uh, do so much that it's very possible to be a spectator. It's very possible to be a person that occupies a seat and sees yourself as a consumer. I don't think God made any of us to be primarily consumers or spectators. He made us to be full participants. Um, it, it changed me. It gave me... Uh, a sense that these things were possible. Now, as so many things do, it came to an end after four years, and I was different because of it. I was someone who'd been to a faraway land and couldn't quite communicate the experiences that I'd had there. I felt like an astronaut who had been to outer space and seen the wonders of space and stars and planets and wanted to talk to people that had seen those same things and it made it very hard to sit still be a spectator be an observer um, because as I had failed to connect the into tomb to any larger entity, there was no relationship with the larger church to fall back on. Um, I know the Spirit led. I know the Spirit blessed it. I know that God took it away at the right time. God has blessed me with something different since then. Um, he created 
opportunities for me to uh, visit many other churches as a consultant, as a person that taught about the things in that book, uh, about gift inventories, about fivefold ministry, um, about the Myers Briggs as a tool, it's not Bible, but it's a usable tool, I think, to the church, um, and about multi-sensory worship that uses all the senses and multiple creative arts. Um, and that was my life for many years that God, I think, mercifully knowing what, uh, how changed I had been by the end of the tomb and how hard it would be to just return to being a spectator, allowed that for a long time. Uh, where I was able to have short-term relationships with churches, churches to teach things, uh, uh, equip their people, and move on. After that phase, uh, there was a fire at my home, and the resulting panic and fear drew me into spiritual warfare drew me into the need to learn about prayer, and I had a number of books that helped me through this. And at the end of this, I had a grand desire to go somewhere where there were people being spiritually oppressed by demons, and pray for their healing, pray for their deliverance, pray for demons to be cast out. So God led me for two years to a street ministry somewhere in the Bay Area, and God used me to lead about five people to salvation. And I say, God did these things. I am obedient. I am not talented at these, th these things. There's not a gift of prayer in the Word of God. Obedience pleases God. Um, so when I say, God used me to cast out devils, used me to heal people, used me to lead, lead people to salvation, I say, here's power. I say, me just being obedient enough to obey. Most recently, God has put on my heart about Hebrews 10.25, and it's not just only about attendance, it's about full participation. It's about you finding what God made you to do and doing that in the body out of obedience, not out of personal glory, out of obedience to God and care that your gifts would honor the people of God, the body of God. And and exhort them as much as possible. We're at 13 minutes. I guess this is going to be three parts. Um, excuse me.